Welcome. Welcome back to Nails Before Films, where I do nails and review movies. Today we will not be continuing from yesterday's theme. In fact, we're not even really talking about a horror movie this time. It's more of a thriller. But oh well, I do what I want on this channel. We'll be looking at Poker Night, a movie probably you've never even heard of. Poker Night came out in 2014. It was released to video on demand and had limited theatrical release. I absolutely love this film. It is just so cleverly written. The story is intense and engaging, with great twists that make sense, but you'll never see them coming. It is probably in my top 10 movies of all time. It's just so underrated. It's a shame that the movie doesn't get any recognition. And hopefully, I can get more people to watch it with this video. You know what? Forget about my video. Go watch the movie now. I can wait here for 104 minutes. No problem. Hi, hopefully you have finished watching the movie. If not, I'm serious. Go watch it now. It's on 2B TV, which is free, so no excuse for not watching it. For those who came back or the people who just insist on staying for some reason, I'll go over a simple synopsis. I don't want to spoil the movie. Please, please, please go see it yourself. So the story is about a young cop who gets kidnapped by a killer. He has no idea who kidnapped him, why and where. As he tries to escape, he recalls the stories the veteran detectives told him during poker night. That's the basic story. Now I'll try to review the movie without any spoilers. Like I said, the writing is top notch. In the beginning, the killer tells the protagonist, everything happens for a reason and people see what they want you to see. The movie does exactly that. Everything happens for a reason. Nothing exists without a purpose. When I watched the movie the second time, I was shocked at how much foreshadowing there was in the movie. If you pay close attention, you'll realize that the twists are all hinted at early on. That's what differentiates a good twist and a bad twist. A good twist should not only surprise the audience, but should also be logical and foreseeable in hindsight. For example, in Across the Spider-Verse, the twist that Miles Morales is sent to the wrong universe is very surprising for most people, but it makes total sense. And if you really paid attention, they already hinted it when he's teleported. A bad twist would be he got sent to the wrong dimension because the machine malfunctioned or something. If that were the case, it'd still be surprising, but it wouldn't make any sense. A real example of a bad twist would be The Flash. Oh, gosh, I hate that movie. The big twist is that the bad guy is actually younger Barry Allen, who went nuts because of time traveling too much. It doesn't really make sense because, let's face it, time traveling never makes sense. They want you to go, whoa, Barry is the bad guy? That's insane. What? But when I saw it, my reaction was, okay. It just makes zero sense and it's very underwhelming in my opinion. Okay, I'm getting carried away here. This video is about how awesome Poker Night is. How the Flash is an absolute dumpster, dumpster fire that destroyed one of my favorite superheroes is a video for another time. Anyway, back to Poker Night, which is infinitely better than The Flash. All of the twists are great. There was only one that I, ha I had a problem with when I saw it. I originally didn't like the final twist when it happened. I thought the movie should have ended without it. But just when I was thinking that, the final thing justified the twist was something they said at the beginning of the movie, making it come full circle. That twist immediately went from terrible to amazing and cemented my love for this film. According to Wikipedia, some critics have a problem with the nonlinear narrative. The story isn't told chronologically, it jumps back and forth from flashback to the time the protagonist is kidnapped. Some say it's difficult to follow, but I wholeheartedly disagree. I think as long as you're paying attention, it's not hard to figure out what's happening. 
I personally like nonlinear storytelling. When it's done well, it's a great way to build suspense and engage the audience by having them piece the information by themselves. For Poker Night, I think both the flashbacks and the present storyline are interesting. I couldn't wait to see how the protagonist tries to escape, but at the same time, I was also intrigued by the flashbacks and wanted to see how the stories would help the protagonist in this situation. By not telling us everything from the get-go, the movie piques our interest, and we don't get the full picture until we watch the whole movie. I think it's fun to slowly figure out why the protagonist is kidnapped, and step by step unfold the villain's plan. I get that non-linear storytelling can get confusing and annoying if it's overused, like Christopher Nolan. Just kidding. I love Oppenheimer, but not Tenen. Anyway, I think. Coconut's pacing is great, and the flashbacks are used in the right places. So for those people who complain it's too hard to follow, you guys are just stupid. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I personally really don't think it's a problem. Next, the acting is also great. The movie has a small cast, but everyone performed compellingly. The five veteran detectives have distinct personalities and really make you interested in the stories they tell. But I have to say, the villain is the best part of this amazing film. I generally like villains more than heroes. I know everyone says that, but villains are just more captivating, captivating most of the time. Sometimes they have fantastic、uh, backstories. Sometimes they have interesting personalities, and sometimes they have unconventional ambitions. There are just so many reasons to like villains. The villain in Poker Night, who's just called the Man. Is a very simple man. He doesn't have a complicated backstory or grand objectives. He only has two goals in life, and they are just so simple. But because they are simple, it makes the man a scary villain. We can't help but feel unhinged because such a person could actually exist in our society. The man's mannerism is also what makes him chilling. He's always calm and collected. And even behaves with a sense of elegance when he's doing awful things, which makes him extremely creepy. Most importantly, he's just so smart and always steps ahead of the protagonist. The guy is a real creep, but it's so hard to not find him charismatic. Michael Eklund really did a fantastic job on this character. Lastly, I really like the movie's dark sense of humor. For a movie so intense, there are actually some scenes that I laughed out loud or just giggled at. It keeps the movie fresh and fun instead of just being grim and dull. Oh, and I should have mentioned this before urging people to see it, but it can get pretty graphic at times. So if you can't stand some gore, this movie is probably not for you. Of course, it's not on the same level as Terrifier or the Saw franchise, but can still get pretty bloody at times. I guess it can sort of count as a horror film if you look at the torture stuff, but the emphasis is mostly on unfolding the mystery, so it's still more of a thriller in my opinion. Anyway, that was my love letter to Poker Night. Again, please, please, please go watch it. It's such an amazing film that really deserves more recognition. I did my best to capture the charisma of the man on my nail. But you have to see him in the movie to understand why he's so chilling and charming at the same time. Normally, I would tell you to like and subscribe, but don't even bother this time. Just go watch the movie. If you do, come back and tell me if you like it or not. I'd be so happy if you loved it as much as I do. And if you don't, well, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I just happen to disagree with yours strongly. Bye bye. Keep nailing it and watch Poker Night, people.